There is a loss of jobs in South Africa. In fact, from a load shading to job shading. I must call a pastor to take you out now. President of the SADC uh, Unified uh, Ancestors uh, uh, Practitioners Association, uh, Professor Sati. What is heritage uh, from an African uh, perspective? Thank you for having me on your show. Um, mm -hmm. When we talk about heritage in African perspective, we talk about what our forefathers, our, our grand grandparents, how yeah. they used to practice, how, to use the, how, how they, they used to live in their home state, and how they used to teach the girls and boys how to behave and how to talk, how to dress, etc., etc., and what to eat and also to follow uh, the ritual when it comes to, uh, to, to traditional ceremonies, you know, mm -hmm. like someone passes on what should be done, and then after that, what should be practiced as well. So in short, that's what uh, yeah. uh, our heritage it means. Mm -hmm. yeah. And South Africa, every September, we observe and celebrate uh, Heritage Month. Uh, should we be uh, celebrating or observing this month as um, heritage given our history, you know where we come from as a country? Uh, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you know, when 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 government take decision, when they take legislation decision to say in such day we should celebrate this, uh, and people happen to forget because you cannot celebrate your heritage only once mm -hmm. uh, a year or only on September. Mm -hmm. September is African month. That's our month. Mm -hmm. We should talk about a lot of things and mm -hmm. we should encourage uh, young people to understand when we talk about heritage, what we mean. Some other countries that they follow the calendar of African uh, culture or tradition, mm -hmm. they, they practice this heritage every day. But, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to politics, people change Yo. the day and give name the day for such and so and so and so. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you must remember September, it was done uh, by other government using September for, for other purposes. Yeah. But now this recent government is using for Heritage Day. But uh, our heritage is for every day. Mm -hmm. It's not about Heritage Month or Heritage Day. Yeah. We should practice our heritage and our culture and our, our tradition, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And I reckon you believe that uh, heritage without the land is oh, meaningless. That's, that's, <laughs> we can't that's, be celebrating that's, it. That's, 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 yeah, yeah. You know, when we talk about heritage, we talk, we talk about land. Mm -hmm. We talk about what is in what is in the land. Mm -hmm. You know, our cattle, our sheep, our goat, our sheep, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Our mineral our, resources, yeah. Yeah, our mineral resources and mm -hmm. everything that is in the land. You know, mm -hmm. land is just a name to say land. But mm -hmm. in the land, there's a lot of things there that people should harvest, people should benefit. But if you don't have that, mm -hmm. then it's unfortunate because you will celebrate heritage, but you don't even have a piece or, or, or maybe mm -hmm. one hectare to plow your, your, your mill, etc., etc. You just celebrate heritage, you're living in a very small shack. Mm -hmm. That's where you don't even have a, a space to play. Your children, they don't even have a space to play. You yeah. cannot even um, have cows or, or, or chicken or cattle in a very small place that it, it has been democratic for you. Yeah. yeah. So, indeed, the whites must return our land so that we can build the likes of the Sadek University of African Medicine. Yo, the Sadek <laughs> University of African Medicine is part of that. You know, we, yeah. we need, we need Because land. without land, we can't we, build we need university. Land. We need yeah. land because I, we need to plant our, our, our indigenous plant, our indigenous medicine that we cannot find anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, you know, after the democracy, uh, um, our Mahoshi, Dindunas and chiefs, etc., they forgot about uh, following the, the, the culture of preserving um, the heritage, of uh, also protecting um, the land, also protecting the forest and plant, etc. People, they just go out there and chop whatever they want to chop, yeah. use firewood, 
because of uh, they don't have electricity, whatever, forever, whatever mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. so, yes, be, be, we definitely need land. You know, when I started to look for a land to build the University of African Medicine, I struggled because um, when I went to some other chiefs, they did not even understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And then I say, no, what I want to do, I want to preserve our plants. Our, I want to preserve our heritage. Yeah. We will have to have a nursery where we can have all these indigenous plant that people, when they want to come and learn, they know where to go and learn about our herbs. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's get the ball rolling, ladies and gentlemen, the people of South Africa, Africa and the diaspora. And thanks very much for tuning in. I bring you this week's edition of the EFF podcast. My name is Titus Tungu. And we're coming to you from Winnie Madigizela Mandela House. And today we are joined by... <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Professor Sati is the president of SADEC University of African Medicine. He joins us now. Thank you very much, Prof, for making time for us here on the EFF podcast. Thank you so much for having me. And it's, it's a great, great pleasure to, to be here in this house, also sitting here with you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a very good thing, you know, that um, uh, I never thought I'll one day come here. But when you invited me, I said, yeah. oh, okay, no, this one I yeah. have to attend. This <laughs> it's one must I go. must go there. <laughs> yeah. The EFF house, mm -hmm. uh, Wilma Dick Zamandela, oh, there where I go. Mm -hmm. So I'm here. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And let's talk about the role of uh, the SADEC University of African Medicine and um, what role does it play? Well, you know, when, when we talk about SADEC University of African Medicine, we must first start from the mother of SADEC University of African Medicine, which is... Uh, Sadek Unified Ancestors Traditional Health Practitioners Association. Mm -hmm. That's where I started to, to see that our people, our traditional practitioners or traditional healers, you can call sangomas, herbalists, etc. They are they, they are missing the point. They are misleading people. When you see now what is happening in our society, mm -hmm. people they don't practice the way traditional practice should be done. Mm -hmm. People are happen to practice black magic, uh, people are happen to, to, to use snakes. For some other reasons, for money, vomiting mm -hmm. money, solving money, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Now, the University of African Medicine, we want to bring that culture of how our traditional practice should be practiced. Mm -hmm. It's not like um, uh, 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 everyone wake up in the morning, you say yourself, you are a traditional healer. Oh, traditional it doesn't work like practice. that. It's, it's a calling. Oh. After calling, then you go for training. After training, you go for all the necessary ritualists, watwasa, wapariliwa, if you have a vandawa, etc. Mm -hmm. From there, the university, that's where we take over. We want those students, we want those matwasanas to mm -hmm. come to the university so we can empower them. Mm -hmm. That's why we say empower traditional practitioners. How do we empower them? We will need to educate them, hygienic-wise, how they should prepare the herbs, where they can put the herbs, if they want to, in, in, for example, if someone wants to open a clinic, someone wants to open a chemist, we, the university will assist those, those students. How do you go about opening your own practice? And also your Indumba, how your Indumba must look like. You know, this is, this is not why, what the traditional practice should behave. Mm -hmm. You know, when you walk into uh, some Indumbas, you, you get scared. You'll see terrible things there. You'll see snakes. You'll see skins of it, mm -hmm. and it, and also s terrible smell. That's not how we should practice. Yeah. Yes, you can use the skins of snakes, the skin of um, animals, etc. But keep your place clean. Make yeah. So the indumbas is more like the 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 surgery. Yes, the indumbas must must be turned into like a surgery. You know, we mm -hmm. must move with the time. Mm -hmm. And also, we we want to teach traditional practitioners not to practice the way they used to practice, to say they just want to heal um, African people, black people, mm -hmm. or elder people, etc. If you are a traditional practitioner, you must accommodate everybody. Everyone who is sick must come to your practice. How will they come to your practice if you don't understand? You did not do mm -hmm. any little bit of research. Mm -hmm. To know, okay, when my clientele, uh, my lot of people who come here, they are ladies or gentlemen who suffer from this and that, how do I help them? And mm -hmm. do a research on your traditional medicine as well. You don't just give people whatever you desire to give because this client is not like that other client. Everybody's got a day complication and also ancestral stories, etc., etc. So the university is there to help people understand and to help a traditional practice to practice properly mm -hmm. in a clean environment. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy about what I see. I normally used to say in different uh, platforms, when when you drive on N1 out of Pulukwani, 
yeah. or maybe you go to Zebediela, you will see young people, young women there selling uh, a concoction, a herb that has been cooked. We don't know, we don't know where. <laughs> oh, yeah, that long. concoction. You see, you see. <laughs> but that, it's for men. <laughs> that is not safe. That's for men. And a lot of men, because they suffer from their low yeah, libido. Is it in pay, so what? <laughs> low libido, low sex drive, etc., etc. They will yeah. buy anything and they will drink anything, which is unfortunate because you don't drink anything that you are not sure if this is good for you. Mm -hmm. You can use it in peso for whatever reason. If you have a, a sexual problems, it will help you there. But what about your, your what about your kidneys? What about your liver? What about other complications in your life? So mm -hmm. it's very good for a, a, a man or a gentleman who even if you want to drink some uh, medication for libido, mm -hmm. make sure that you drink something that you know that is safe, is hygienic, uh, properly prepared, etc. You don't yeah. know how long that medicine has been standing there on anyone. Mm. You just buy it because of sake of your, your wife, she's complaining, or your girlfriend is complaining. You drink it, <laughs> you'll you you be fine tonight. Eh? You'll be fine tonight, at, or maybe two days, three days. But it, be, after that, what is going to happen to your kidney? Because you don't know what is inside. So the University of Akron Medicine is teaching people to do that. Mm. Those young people selling those herbs there on the street, they are doing very well, of course, it's because of unemployment, etc. Some of them, they don't even understand. They even... They don't have a knowledge how to how long you should boil that herb and how long you should keep that herb before it's consumed. Okay. You, you know, so people should be say careful on yeah. what you So take. the Sadek University of African Medicine is there to bring about regulation when it comes to the use or usage of uh, African uh, medicine. We can, we can say say so, yes, but the regulations, regulation, remember, is done by legislation, by mm -hmm. parliament, mm -hmm. by a council of uh, traditional practitioners. Unfortunately, you know, in, uh, here in South Africa, we are still battling mm -hmm. since uh, our independence. We have a, a gazette, we have a constitution of traditional practitioners, we have a, um, a, a council that is there, you know, interim council for how long? Interim council, they will disband the interim council, they cannot get things right. That's how the council should regulate our traditional practitioner. They, they, those, those, the, the council, they are the ones that should come with the rules and guidance and mm. proper way how to practice. So we don't have council at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, in South Africa, we don't have a council of traditional practitioners. We used to have um, um, an interim council. I think it was disbanded very soon, mm -hmm. uh, not, not long Recently, ago. Yeah. Because people are fighting there. They want to impose things to traditional practitioners. You don't impose things to traditional practitioners. Mm -hmm. Go out there, have a meeting with the traditional practitioners, talk to them, understand how, if you are a council, you want to regulate this practice. And uh, you remember any traditional practice, we have a different... Uh, people who practice Amagesa, some of them are herbalists, some of them are Zinyanga, some of them are Bantubok Femba, some of them are Sangoma. Mm -hmm. So you cannot just put everything in one umbrella. You say, this is the regulation for traditional practitioners. We will not allow that. Oh. Uh, if you, if the council must be a proper council for us, as traditional practitioners must sit down with us, discuss everything in the whole province. You don't call five people in the province and then you you give them breakfast, they sleep there, and then uh, the next day you say, everybody agreed on, on the regulation. Yeah. We would not allow that. Yeah, and how does the consumers of African medicine ensure that whatever that they are using uh, in terms of the dosage mm. is, 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 is enough or it's as per the prescription? How do they uh, get the prescription? Like you said, that some sometimes people use in pace or for other reasons, but sometimes you find that it's not healthy for for, 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 for their for their body. Now, how do they go about ensuring that whatever they take is uh, per the limit or, or is prescribed? You know, that that's that's where the University of African Medicine come in. Mm -hmm. Because when someone is sick, go to a traditional practitioner, I can still see people giving people deadline to five liter of, of, of cooked medication, one liter, mm -hmm. you tell them to drink Half, half a glass or full glass, I don't know. But it, that is not how we should practice. That's why people take traditional practice without, it looks like we don't have a knowledge, we don't have an understanding. Traditional mm -hmm. healers or practitioners, they do have a knowledge and understanding. What we need to do is to empower them, to educate them. This is not the way you should give, because someone when he's sick, you give him five liters or you give her five liters. If he, if he or she drinks one cup in the morning and the pain continues, 
I'm telling you, in the afternoon, she'll drink two or three mm -hmm. cups, which is overdose. Oh. Now, how do we do that? So I have done a research. You remember, done a research. I went to different countries. You know, I went to Germany. I went mm -hmm. to the rest of Amsterdam, countries mm -hmm. like, like in the, our continent, doing research, wanting to understand. From there, my herbs go through laboratories so we can have a proper mm -hmm. measurement. You know, we must have a 100 mil measurement of medication. It can be five or six bottles, small bottles, with a teaspoon. And a person must be guided how much you should drink in the morning after breakfast. You don't just give five liters to someone who's sick. You say, take this. A person will drink five, the, the whole five <laughs> and liters in one day. And it, it will create a problem, you know. Yeah. So health-wise, that's why the university is there, so that we can educate our practitioners. We guide them. We help them also in doing research. And we help them also in preparing their medicine through laboratory. So people will drink the safe medication from our, our traditional practitioners. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talking about uh, traditional practitioners, uh, South Africa is beset with, uh, you know, a wave of unscrupulous um, uh, traditional uh, healers, mm -hmm. those that claim to be uh, traditional healers. And you've highlighted that this is strictly a calling. Now, how does one determine that I have a calling to become a traditional leader, uh, I mean, rather a uh, healer. You know, you know what is happening mm. in our days? Uh, yeah. It's unfortunate, you know. Um, people, because unemployment. When you see the unemployment, people will do anything to act like traditional practitioners. That's oh, what happens. by all means they possible. Will go, all means. They will go mm. to the shops and buy regularly, dress like traditional practitioners. Mm. Some of them, they are very scary. When you see them, <laughs> you can see that, oh, You feel I, like you can I, run, eh? <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and uh, you found that that particular person, he knows nothing or she knows nothing. Some of them, they go for training for one week, two weeks. You can't. A calling to become a traditional practice, it comes from your, 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 your family, your grand-grandparents. They went through... Your ancestors. All, yes, ancestors. You, and you don't just like to become, to become a traditional practitioner. It's a calling. So the calling, you must follow the instruction or guidance for, 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 for that calling. That's why in our days now, you see, if you walk here in Johannesburg, in KZN, everywhere, you see young people dressed like traditional practitioners, drinking drink beers, etc., on the street, dancing on the social media, doing all those sort of things. Those things that they are doing, that's not what our culture and our heritage want. When you are a traditional practitioner, you should respect even that regularly. You don't dress the regal of traditional practitioners, you walk on the street, you know, because you remember, those clothes or those 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 traditional regularly, you wear them when the spirit is up, when the spirit mm. want to wear. I can give you an example. When you go to the Catholic church, a priest that a, a priest or pastor does not keep wearing what he's wearing when he wants to talk to his God. Okay. You know, when time comes to talk to God, then he will dress like that. So now how traditional practice you dress Amazang with Impande, everything, you <laughs> walk on the street. So when the spirit comes, what are you gonna dress? That's disrespecting our ancestors. Mm. That's why the Sadiq University of African Medicine is going to assist in showing them the, the way. And please, mm -hmm. this thing of waking up in the morning and then you, you are a traditional healer, wake up in the morning, you are a professor, wake yeah. up in the morning, you are a doctor, you are a herbalist, you are killing or maybe uh, destroying the sect of traditional healer. It mm. can't be like that. People must respect this sector. It's a sector which, which is very important, and the people who are practicing this, this uh, practice of traditional healing, yeah. they should do it properly and with all the respect. Yeah. yeah. So are you in the spirit now? I see that you're, you're rocking your own regalia now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is not a, the, the, the okay. spiritual regalia. Oh, it's not. No, no, okay. no, no. You know, you know when you come to, to, to my Indumba, when the spirit is you, my grand parent this out, my spirit is up. Okay. You'll see how I dress. Oh. You know, I have a, a special a, a, a clothing to dress. This is just, mm. I just dress this because I wanted mm. people to see I'm a traditional practitioner. You can see I'm not wearing in a lot of bees, etc. Okay. Yeah, but I wear them when the spirit is, 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 is there yeah. because it's not for me, it's for the spirit to, to celebrate. It is for the spirit to have that power so that the, the power that it, it, come through me, and then I can say whatever I say. But when I'm talking to you now, my ancestors, the spirit guide me. That's why um, I have a small computer here. You ask me <laughs> any question. My yeah. ancestors will tell me what is the answer. Really? Yeah, really. Okay, so they whisper a little bit. Yes. Here's the answer. <laughs> wow. 
they always say greater is he who is within me. So yeah. it also applies even in in, in African uh, spirituality, if uh, so to speak. Yes, it does apply. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So as a custodian of uh, you know culture and African medicine, can you just elaborate on the importance of um, African medicine? Well, you know, remember, I think it was year 2000 when the World Health Organization, yeah. they, they had a, a huge meeting there with a lot of countries in Geneva, and mm -hmm. they have agreed that they, let's celebrate African medicine. That's why every year in August, from 25th to the 31st of August, mm -hmm. uh, the whole world celebrates uh, African medicine. Uh -huh. um, Initially, in South Africa, when we had a previous uh, Dr. Mandu Chawlam Simang, she was a minister of health by then, mm -hmm. she understood the, the importance of traditional medicine. And by then, she made sure that there's a funding for, for, for each province so that when that time comes, traditional practitioners should celebrate. It, it was celebrated everywhere, everywhere, and then all of a sudden, the government, Department of Health, does not have funding for, for, for that. Mm -hmm. That's why now you see the, the, the traditional medicine week has declined. It's only some traditional healers, they still continue to do it, like a Sadek University of African Medicine, a Sadek Ancestors Traditional Practice, we celebrate every year. And we connected with Crook National Park. Because when we talk about herbs and traditional medicine, yeah. we need to educate our people. So when we celebrate African medicine, um, we invite Kruka National Park, we invite all traditional practitioners. They bring a lot of indigenous plants from Kruka National Park. And on that day, they will give each traditional practitioner a different plant and teach them how to plant, how to preserve, how to protect the plant. So a lot of traditional practitioners under this um, uh, association, they have a lot of indigenous plants in their home state. They know how to protect, uh, they know how to preserve and do know how to use it when they have their client. So it is very important that we respect uh, traditional medicine. Mm -hmm. What is happening now when we see um, people going to Lipompo or to Pumalanga, Swaziland, come with a bag full of a yeah. lot of herbs? That is unfortunate. You remember now um, the Department of uh, Environmental Affairs, mm -hmm. uh, we had a workshop with them at some stage teaching traditional healers or practitioners, when you want a plant, don't kill the plant because when you kill the plant, it means the, the mood that you, you are taking there is not going to work because the plant is dead. Okay. In our culture, in our tradition, leave the plant there. So you must take, maintain the biodiversity. Yes, just know. take a little bit of, 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 of roots, a little bit of bark, and you leave that for, for, your, for the next, next traditional practitioner. When he comes, she or he will find that the tree is still alive. Mm -hmm. So what is happening now because people want to sell, they will just chop the whole, the whole tree. And when will you get that? Yes. So, no, where will you get it again? Mm -hmm. That's why at the University of African Medicine, we have a big nursery day where we preserve, we have a lot of indigenous uh, plants so that we want people not to suffer. When you want this, you get it. You, you, you can come and get it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's always a confusion between um African medicine and Western uh, medicine, medicine yeah. and what divides the two it's I think I'd like to believe religion there are those that believe in uh, Western culture and there are those that believe in African culture and those that uh, have for example Chris, Christians they wouldn't want to associate themselves with African uh, medicine. Would you say there is a difference between uh, Western medicine? like a panado and a, a medicine, a traditional herb that would work the same way as a, a panado. Would, would you then say the two clash or in your, in, in, your, in, your, in your viewpoint, you believe that in fact the two can collaborate? They, 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 it was not necessary to have a clash. Unfortunately, it's because of the colonialism. You know, when colonialism came mm -hmm. in here, they colonized the mind of everybody. They, 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 they even say when you dress like, uh, you know, on the 25th, 24th September, people, they were dressing the African uh, the beautiful clothes. They would say you are a demon. It's a certain uh, clothing. But uh, now, recently, people started to realize that the traditional medicine, mm -hmm. the panado, is the same thing. You know, panado comes from the herbs. Uh, Vix comes from the plant. We have the plants in our, 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 our nursery um, uh, there that... 
we can show you this plant is the plant that they make Vicks. Mm. This plant is the plant they make. Do. So, no, we people, we, we need to decolonize our mind. We must move with the time uh, because life is life. You find that you, you go to the attraction practitioner, you get healed. You go to the Western doctor, you get healed. But at some stage, a, a Western practice can fail to assist you, then you must go to the other one. They, so the collaboration is very important. That's why I'm having a lot of meetings, meeting some different universities. You know, I was addressing a conference in University of Western Cape. There's a, there's a Chinese uh, medicine faculty there in University of Western Cape. Mm -hmm. Now, when they invited me there, I met the ambassadors and the I people from China. When I told them that I'm building University of African Medicine, they say, no, uh, Professor Tlad, now you are challenging us. I said, no, I'm not challenging you. Yeah. You're coming from China. Sure. You have your Chinese herbs there. Here in Africa, we have our own here. We have our Ch Ch uh, African tea. Mm -hmm. But it's unfortunately, when you walk to the homestead of a lot of people, you'll find that there's a Chinese medicine, there's a Chinese tea, there's Indian tea. But why can't we use our own African tea? Because we do have those teas here. Yeah. So, so people, they just want to drink a medication that has got a color. It can be pink, it can be green or yellow, white. But when you go to Trachanila, it gives you the same medication, which that is proper medication, that is black in color. And people decide, no, 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 we are not going to drink this one. We're going to drink the one that is in the chemist or it's from the GP. But it's, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy now because people started to realize yeah. when we had the COVID here, People Thank you. said, yeah. they challenged me on, on yeah. air. When I said, look, this is not a time of us fighting about people should use herbs or not. Mm -hmm. Lot of people, lot of doctors, yeah. lot of scientists, lot of ministers, mm -hmm. MECs, they tend into traditional medicine. They train to, to, to steam. They train to, to consume yeah. herbs because everyone wanted to live. All of us want to live. So we must not uh, say this is better, this one is not better. Even the constitution says so. Uh, but unfortunately, when people they have their own belief, they say, no, 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 I won't even go to the, to the herbalist. Mm -hmm. That's why the university now, we're assisting traditional healers to operate in a clean environment, make their practice look beautiful and nice, etc. Mm -hmm. They remove all these difficult things or skins, etc., so that they will accept anybody. It can be GP, it can be Christian, it can be bishop. It can. When you are sick, go to a healer. She or he will heal you. It's not necessarily to say when you go to traditional practitioners, then you you'll go to divine bones. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem lies. Then the Christian or, or Muslims, they don't want to go through that process of divine bones. When they come to you, they have a diarrhea. They want to have herbs to stop diarrhea. When they come to you, they are vomiting. They want herbs to stop that. But when you go to some traditional healers, they will want to throw bones. Why you throw Throw divine bones while you know this person has got a leg problem, he's got a swollen legs, he's got a asthmatic, etc., etc. Just take these herbs and help the client, and the person will be healed. Yeah. That's what I did when I have done a research. After that, I said, no, 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 no. I know a lot of people, they won't say, they will, they will not uh, uh, agree on what I'm saying. To say, okay, for now, I just want cure people because I know. I did a research. I did a lot of different herbs. If a woman suffers from period of pain, I know what to give. I don't need to go to divine bones. Oh. Because when you go to divine bones, the divine bones, they will not detect the period of pain. First of all, the divine bones will go back to where this person was born. Mm. What happened there? Mm. You have a jealous people at work. You have people are fighting for your position. Mm. But but the person a deviation did not come, of some yes, kind. Yeah. Your, a client did not come for those kinds of things. Come here because she or he need she is having an infertility problem. Focus on that. So the divine bones will go there, will go there, will up until it comes here, and then it all of a sudden a person changed their mind. I say, oh okay, the period pain doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Uh, what is matter? Then, I think way. at work because I've got a <laughs> lot of uh, <laughs> enemies. <laughs> yeah. Let, uh, let me it just cleanse me and protect me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's which is okay, yeah. but uh, but I think is the best thing is to focus on what a person first come and tell you. Oh. What's the problem? Suffer from headache, a non-stop headache, a dizziness. Give the herbs for that. Yeah. That's why research will help you. Will help a traditional healer to know what is the herbs that I should give 
to a person who suffer from 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 yeah. from, from noise blockage etc yeah. yeah. i think you are the honest uh, traditional healer uh, alive because most of the traditional healers will always defend the defenseless i mean if you are able to say focus on the 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 the, the root cause of the problem mm. and if need be then you'll go and throw the bones and determine other things but if a client comes with a you know a, a problem with, with, with a headache yes, give them yes. uh, you know uh, yes. the herbs for the headache sort out the headache yeah, yeah. so I, i just want to understand from your point of view can people fake the the meaning of or the meaning from the divine bones if they throw no. bones and all of that yeah. is it possible that it, someone can claim it's and say way. at work hey back lawyer it's while everywhere. it's not there <laughs> that that's where a lot of people they don't like to go to divine bones because they know um for example um if 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 a gentleman or a lady she dress nice she driving a bmw or a big car she go to a traditional hila a traditional hila see the person is hey long take a cash is got lot of money and that person is did not come here because of um, something at work at work it's everything fine but this person come here for something else uh, maybe relationship problems and when a, div- a, a, a traditional healer throw the divine bones he will say she will look at you and say oh yeah we una male we instead of telling you what you want instead of telling you what the spirit what the divine bones are saying a person will tell you something else something that will scare you something that will make you want to be uh, 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 protected in in your no body and you did not come for that so people and do- why are they doing that though well they want money because they know if you come for 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 headache problem is less money but if they say you want to be protected from work you want to protect your business you want to protect it from this and that it, it will be a lot of money that's what the problem lies and you when when a person is sick you go and do that at home there's nothing wrong there the person is sick focus on the sickness of the person mm-hmm. i can tell you in 2012 i think it's 2012 yeah mm-hmm. when we had a massive problem in kruka national park of uh, rhino poaching mm-hmm. i heard on radio that uh, when those people are caught those criminals those poachers they found them with muti they went up tsungulu went up mafure and all these well i'm so that when they go to kruka national park lion cannot uh, see them Uh, or, or maybe the the, the rhino also mm-hmm. uh, will be powerless yeah now i said as a leader of traditional lila i went to to croquet center park I had a meeting with them i said no 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 we must stop this because this is not a good does not present us properly and then they say what do you want us to do i said let's have a campaign we had a huge campaign mm-hmm. in pumalanga in lipompo mm-hmm. When we went to the Kruka National Park we went to all the tri- tribal offices we went to the school teaching them don't do this don't allow criminals to use muti because what they are doing if they fail to 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 kill the rhino they got killed they will come and kill you mm-hmm. and i the trashy healers a lot of them they say ah baba sati now what we going to eat because we need man i say <laughs> I, i will tell you what you must use what you must do yeah. the muti that to give criminals to go to Kruka National Park to commit crime to 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 do this rhino poaching or maybe to get out of jail after rape get out of jail after killing somebody i will tell you when you do the research this muti will heal millions of people we can even discover a medication to 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 cure hiv and aids through you as healers because those mutis they are powerful so let's take the muti, muti to the laboratory let's check how best we can heal cancer how best we can do the, then you will benefit you will so get money so you're revolutionizing the african yes. medicine and in you, that way. you will get money properly without mm-hmm. a sleepless night to say oh maybe those people they went to rob there they will come yeah. back because they did not succeed or somebody yeah. was got killed then lot of traditional practitioners they stopped that's but does how, that multi work uh, that's prof. why i managed to stop the ritual pulling it poaching at crooked national park we had a big event at mm-hmm. this kukuza camp mm-hmm. when all the management of kruka national park came there we performed the ritual he passa mm-hmm. telling healers telling criminals no more going to do to the traditional healers and the criminal they were scared we say when you go to traditional healers you know what you're going to do you go you got arrested so we empowered our traditional healers go lo go van va fika la a go jala ko mina i killed four or five rhinos yeah. please protect me mm-hmm. don't worry prepare some muti umveka ka shfutu 
Yeah. Mfunga neta in Kumba. Yeah, when when is busy steaming? <laughs> call the police. They will call and, uh, and look up for Lang Kumba. Yeah. Call the police. Is <laughs> Get here. arrested while Can steaming. I, yes. <laughs> And yeah. then the criminal, they say, oh, now we, are, we cannot go to trash and heal us. So there's a, there's a best way of using muti. There's a wrong way of using muti. So in my lifetime, I don't want the name of trash and to be to be mentioned on a wrong way doing. Please, yeah. let's correct this. Uh, that's why I was given a word by Kruger National Park. A media from international, they came, they wanted to see how brave I am. I'm not scared for Trish Hila to do this. Also, no, I'm not scared. What my ancestors are guiding me to say, let's focus on this, let's stop yeah. this. Let's do that. My ancestors will protect me. Mm-hmm. That's why the the, the rhino pushing decline. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I'm happy ab- about that achievement. Yeah. It's like it's like when you talk about um, uh, multi killings, uh, ritual killings, yeah. it can work, it can make somebody rich. There's no such thing. I had a campaign as well in Lipompo in Pumalanga mm-hmm. in KZN to say, stop this. There's no such thing. If that was the case. But are there traditional healers who use uh, human body parts for for, for, for muti? Yes. In the name of ritual killing. In the name of ritual killing. There are a lot of them. If they don't know how to how to do proper things, they will tell you when you come there, they say, no, we need the hand of somebody. And what you'll do, you can't end of some, get a hand of anybody. You'll find someone of your relative. Or somebody there, you kill them, you get, take the hand and go and give the herbalist or trash healer. And then what will happen? Nothing. Because the hand will not bring the client at your business. The hands of anybody will not make you rich. And also a traditional healer to touch a blood, that's a sin, a very big sin. Your ancestors, the spirit will run away from you. So those are the fake people. Those are the amagaza. People are doing that. Mm. That's why when we we, we they met, call it in other languages they call it ukutwala. Ukutwala, yes, mm. ukutwala, yes, ukutwala. Um, those people they, they they never had a calling. Batwala. Uh, they went dead. Ukutwala, batwala lo. But but tatalento ina bungos. But tatalento ina bungos. But mvogeska tatalento le izogmangas. Because M- M- Vogeskat is going to kill your children, is going to kill you, you'll have a sleepless night, and then you end up saying, oh, why is it a And when you try to take it back, no, 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 it's yours. Tatile, tatile. Yeah. Tatile, tatile. And more frequently, we are shown, if family are shown, there is no one who, who, who is rich. Go to Ubula Labanto, 76 Gas Labanto. There is no such thing. Uh, that's why, if it, that was the case, all these big shops that we have here in South Africa or in the world, Mm-hmm. If it was about killing people, uh, hey, you know, we have a lot, lot of big shops here in South Africa. Mm-hmm. You know, I can mention big shops. Every day is full. You know why? Because mm-hmm. they have a, a good pricing. They make sales. Mm-hmm. They say inside that we're having sale. Mm-hmm. So if you're a traditional healer or if you have a shop, you have a spaza shop, the only way to attract your people is to have a proper a cleanness spaza shop and also to have a good pricing. Also, you must have a sales. That's mm-hmm. how you can attract people. But anyway, if you say you don't have luck, people don't come, you can go to a traditional healer just to cleanse you, to bring your spirit, your ancestors to be with you, and that muti, then you'll have a, a luck. No, not, not about killing people. Oh, so muti can work for luck. Muti does, can work for does luck, muti but muti work only... in football? Yes, muti work on football. Ah, now you're saying something else. <laughs> muti works in football. I don't yeah. know if you missed that one on 20. On 2010, in the World Cup, mm-hmm. I'm the one who assisted the German team. When they came from Germany, they looked for me here because they knew they, they history, they know that I did the research in Germany. Yeah. They they had to come to my place. By the way, the first Bo, match... Bo Lucas be- Budowski, Bo Lucas yeah. Budowski, Bo, Bo, Bo Schweinsteiger, all those people. Yeah. I, I performed ritual to them, but no. We mm-hmm. want to see, man. Mm-hmm. If we're here in Africa, now we want to see, does the, the multi help... Yeah, Help to enhance my luck so I can score goals. Mm-hmm. I can. I say yes. They say how do they do that? I, say, I performed. It was live in German television. It was live on Super Sport. Mm-hmm. I did that. Yeah. You know what happened when they play games? Some some of the teams they play with them. They will look <laughs> like ducks. There. They did not even see how to play. <laughs> yeah. But why didn't you help us, uh, South Africa, Bafana, Bafana, to win the World I Cup? I help you who improve. come look for help. I cannot, uh, according to our ancestors and our yeah. belief, I cannot come to you to say, hey, I want to help you. No, no, no. A lot of people, they came, this, why can't you help this team, that team? There are some people, the teams that I'm helping, yes, which I cannot mention, um, but the, the team or the squad that need help, they must approach me. Mm. You know, that's how 
I would say my ancestors brought them, they let me help them. So okay. Germany, I, I helped them. I even helped them to win the World Cup in Brazil. So a lo- lot of, and you remember it's white, white, white Yo. country in Germany. Yeah. Uh, the coach, when they came there, he said to me, hey, but uh, professor, they were in four ways, in, living in four ways. They said, but what you are doing here, do you think it's going to help? I said, it's going to help you. Yeah. And then one day, the manager said, okay, now that you perform this, let's not use this moot now. We're going to play. I think they were playing, playing England. That's where they missed penalty and then they, they were kicked out. Mm. Then, then after the match, they were fighting. They come to me and say, I told you. So are you the one who well, made uh, Germany to beat us in the first round? I mean, I think South Africa <laughs> played when Simpio Ishawarala scored. We played against <laughs> Germany. That's me. <laughs> they, 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 they called me when... when ah, you when... sold us out, Prof. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I did not sell anybody. You did not come to me and ask for help. So someone who came to me and asked for help, I did that. Yeah. Frank Leopard. You know Frank Leopard? He yeah, scored Frank... a goal. A mm-hmm. beautiful goal. But the referee, the last man, nobody saw that goal. That's the goal that's supposed to beat Germany. But they did not see all of them. They said that it was not a goal. And yeah. the German went through. Yeah. <laughs> so multi works, of course, to announce people. But it's got nothing to do with uh, with uh, human body flash. It's a yeah. lot to do For with For those who mixer. say that is witchcraft, what can you say to them? It's a, there's a witchcraft. Witchcraft is, is what I said initially, practicing black magic. Oh. Witchcraft is those people who are making snakes, making tokoloshis, mm. making zombies, you know, going to the graveyard, digging the graveyard, taking bones there, and turning those, those bones to, 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 to create havoc to somebody's yeah. family. That is a witchcraft. And witchcraft and healing, those are two different things. Mm-hmm. A traditional practitioner, you cannot be um, practice a witchcraft because this person wants to heal people. So people who practice witchcraft, most of them, they are not healers. They're just people who pretend to be healers, and then they will go practice that. Witchcraft is like when someone is specialized on Okubavan um, Shufula, uh, you know? Oh, yeah. But, hey, when I look at Tupuaso, go to set so and so and so and so, so that's, that's witchcraft. You can't practice witchcraft in the sector of traditional healing. When we talk about healing, we need to heal people. That's why I, I, I always fight with those people who say, no, 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 we're not worrying. No, no, we're not full for what? Heal people. But you must remember, our ancestors and our gift are different. The way I'm gifted, I feel sorry when I see someone sick. I feel sorry when I see someone suffering. I, I, I wish I can help this person. You know, that's why my ancestors give me power. Um, uh, uh, and God also give me power to heal a lot of people. If you come to my practice, you, you, every day you'll find 200 people in the queue waiting for, for, for to be healed, waiting to, for, for, for my, uh, my services. And uh, after that, I go home and I talk to my ancestors. Every client who visited me today, today whatever they came here for, suffering from this disease, that disease, Jesus, Flana, whatever, whatever, I want them to be healed. When they come next appointment, they come happy. Oh. Yeah. So this thing of practicing black magic, um, ritual killing, also uh, witchcraft, that's not that's not a good thing. I really say it's not a good thing. Yeah. I say that in a, in a public platform. I say mm-hmm. that in a, in a conference. I say, no, you people, you believe on witchcraft. It's up to you. But that's not where the healing is supposed to be. We're supposed to heal people, yeah. not to practice something else. Yeah. Is there multi for? That's a simple thing. Like you say, a lot of boys say, ah, I cannot find girls. When I talk to girls, I want some of them, they are shy to talk to girls. Yeah. No, there's a mood, of course. That's not a black magic. That's a that's an ordinary mood that anyone can find in a, in a, in a forest or wherever. You can find in no You can find you chew it. When you talk, it's nice. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, those those things you can find them. Yeah, and 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 as we um, approach uh, the festive season, um, uh, Prof, mm. more often than than not, the government would call in um, you know members from all walks of life. Uh, the interfaith. Uh, mm. They also bring in traditional healers, pastors to pray mm. for safety, road safety. Uh, so, what do you? What role do you play in that? And how do you ensure that uh, road carnages are reduced? What sort of 
contri- what what kind of contribution do you make to, to ensure that uh, there is no road carnage? It's very difficult. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to 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 stop road carnage. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll mention fewer things. Some of the things is, is this fake license. Some of the things these people who don't even go to driving school, they just buy license sitting at home. Oh. Some of them is ignorance on the road and alcohol and fatigue. But uh, oh, when it comes to traditional practice, what we normally do, I refuse to do c- certain things when they came to me to say, people are dying on the street in, in this mm-hmm. N1 or in that road. Let's go and perform ritual cleansing the, 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 the area. I refuse. I say, no. I told the MEC, we cannot just... Mm-hmm. Go there and, and we say we perform cleansing of the road because there's a lot of accident. Before we do that, according to me, my understanding and my knowledge, we must find the peop- the, f- the relative of those people who died on the road. For example, they were going home in December or whatever time, so they, they, they died a lot of them. You, as a department, you know which one is from where. Mm-hmm. This one is from Malau, from Zambia, from Malamulele, wherever. Let's find the, the, the relatives. The relatives must come here. We will guide them how to take the, the beloved one spirit mm. before we we prepare Muti to, 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 to sprinkle there and, and, and cleanse the area. Mm-hmm. They say, no, but this is going to cost us money. I say, it's going to cost you money, but if we people go there and perform this ritual, you'll cause more accident. Because those people who died there on the accident, they did not want to die there. They were going home. But unfortunately, they happen to, to die there. That's why I normally tell people, you can't put a grave on the road. You can't put a, a tombstone on the road. You can't put a cross on the road. Where your relative died there on the road, and then every year you go there and remember. How can you go and remember a person on the street? When someone dies on the road, a family is supposed to go there and take the spirit home and go and bury the particular loved one at home. That's why everyone has one grave. You can't have two graves. Once you have two graves, something is wrong. Because the spirit, according to our, our African belief, the mm-hmm. spirit will want to visit that area of the accident with one visit home as well. So people should understand, mm-hmm. uh, before you go and cleanse or perform a ritual on the street where there's a lot of accident, I know the government will ask us, of course, before we do that, let's get the families to come and take their the, the, the loved one. You know, I want to say something that make, make, me, make me feel and happy and understand that people coming to their sense, even the government come to their sense that we African, we cannot leave the body of someone who died somewhere there. You, you know where's the grave. You leave the bones there. You leave everything there. The family, when they want to visit or they want to perform rituals, maybe Valak Pasha, Gwelaka Lembe, Bangi Pasha, they must go to the grave. And where is the grave? The grave is in Germany. Oh. So, so what they did now to bring back those one who died there, it's, it's a very good thing because the spirit of those people, they were coming to South Africa to visit the family, going back to the grave. Coming here, going back to the grave. And it can create havoc. It can create problems on, 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 on the area or in the family, etc. Mm-hmm. So this, this, this citizen, I mean, this time that is coming, a festive season, is a time where people should be very cautious. Mm-hmm. That's why when you leave Johannesburg, going home, talk to our sisters. From Johannesburg coming back, I'm going back to work. So we happen to forget about how do we talk to our sisters, we just say, oh, because I have money, it's fine. I'll just buy a car and drive. Mm-hmm. You won't spend three months with that car. Talk to ancestors. Show your ancestors. I did buy a car because you gave me luck to get a job, etc., etc., to be well educated. So I'm summoning you, ancestors, to show you this is my vehicle. I'm building a new house. I want to be peace, peaceful in my marriage. You need to do that in our culture and our tradition. Mm-hmm. Do you believe in God, Prof? I do. And would you say? I do. Um, ancestors, or there's a clash between ancestors and there, there is no clash. God. There's no clash. There's a program that I, I'm, I'm running on Mganlone in any different radio station. Mm-hmm. People who, 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 God, the creator, we call it creator, is strong. I talk about Davuri, Abanyabat, so the Bazo Show, Ngelinye, Gama, Akunandap. But all of us, Sisuka Kuyene, and Abogogobe to our ancestors, the late parents who passed on. 
Mas kuluma navo, ar pasa, when we talk to them, we talk to them, they go and talk to the, I get it, the family is a long chain, eh? It's a long, that chain goes up, up until kukukunkunkul. What I don't believe and I don't understand, ilento enza ayoma de Christianity, kunavo Jesu, kunavo banban, I'm not there, but unkunkunkulu, unkunkunkulu is there. So what we need to do when we perform our rituals, we talk to our sisters. That's why no mas la pabandu, se aba la pabandu, se azuti, e, to our sisters, Vasos Kulumela Kum Velingar, Vasos Kulmela Kunkunkul, who lays into Sizenza, Pumela. So, yes, I, I believe Kunkunkul. That's why um, my family, my children, they go to church. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a very fortunate uh, person because um, at my home you find pastors coming to visit me, having, having a cup of tea with me, you know, so which is very good because mm -hmm. if you are far from a traditional healer, you cannot understand how this person lives. If you want to understand how this person lives, visit that person. Mm -hmm. Sit with them. Have a cup of tea. Then you will understand. I think you too, you understand me now. Look at Samela. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, yes. Now, how does ancestors really work? How do we communicate with their ancestors? Is it through sniff? Is it through performing rituals? Uh, the, the main thing is the sniff. Okay. Because a sniff, mm -hmm. you can you can even use it even if you, when you you are in Johannesburg, you come from Nelspruit, you are in Johannesburg at your small room, you can talk to ancestors there. Um, but it, there's a time that like a, like a, in the festive seasons, in the holidays, there's a time when people now they say okay because everybody is here at home, let's perform umpaso. Umpaso is the main one. That's where you're gonna slaughter a, 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 a head goat, of cow, yeah. Yeah, cow, uh, cow or goat, etc. Then, but you don't just slaughter there. You must go to the grave, clean all the graveyard, mm -hmm. talk to your ancestors, mm -hmm. and perform bringing the ancestors, the spirit of the, your ancestors home. From there, you slaughter, and then you 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 do the the the, the, the main ceremony, mm -hmm. But the smaller ceremony that you individual can do, you can do it by yourself mm -hmm. when you are far from home. You know, but when you're home, do it with your family. It makes a proper one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we walk on the streets, uh, uh, Prof, sometimes we see uh, leaflets uh, you know, on the poles. Some saying if you want to do abortion, contact so and mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Are those safe? Let's pain, try. And, pain is enlargement. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> pain is enlargement. <laughs> you, you know. You know. You know what? In South Africa, <laughs> yeah. Since nineteen. I think I think ninety five years mm -hmm. ninety five when the borders were open, mm -hmm. everybody came from our brothers from from the continent, which is nothing wrong with that. They came here and a lot of them they called themselves doctors, young people. Some of them eighteen, twenty years. Sometimes some they they those ones they they practice sort of magic. Um, you cannot do illegal abortion, which is dangerous and it kills a lot of young women. We have, I have experienced a lot of those things in different provinces because I've got practice in different provinces. Um, some of them, they don't die immediately, but some of them, after that illegal abortion, they get a severe pain. The womb has got a problem. Now we need to try to, to, to fix that. And in the future, when you want a child, it becomes mm -hmm. very difficult. So that's not what the law says. Mm -hmm. That's why when we had a meeting with some of the municipality, we asked, but you, you have bylaws here. Why you allow people to put uh, uh, flyers mm -hmm. on the stop street? You know where is the stop street? Where pe people are supposed to see this is a stop street? Mm -hmm. They put the flyers there, right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bring back lost life, uh, all sort of things that they will mention there. Um, f quick abortion. Why, if you are a municipality, don't clean the town and find a way of pre preventing these people from doing this? Mm -hmm. But uh, what can we say? Um, they, they, they do that uh, activities at night. Nobody see them. You wake up in the morning, you see a lot of placard. So a lot of young girls are really uh, suffering. School girls are really suffering because they are doing legal abortion. And after that, in South Africa, we have a legal abortion. That if you are pregnant, unfortunately, you were raped or whatever happened, you don't want the pregnancy. There's a clinic, there's a hospital that you can go there and do it for free. Mm -hmm. don't, don't lose life by doing illegal abortion. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. Can traditional healers uh, deal with safe or do carry out uh, safe abortion? No, no. A simple no. We don't do abortion. 
But uh, I can say we don't do abortion, and someone there is a traditional healer or traditional that do that. That is unfortunate. We don't do that. Like I said, we don't want blood in our hands. We don't want to kill people. Because when we say someone is pregnant, it doesn't matter if it's, it's one month or some weeks. We know it's a human being in there. So once you do that, it means you are killing people. Because after abortion, you must perform a ritual of cleansing that particular person and yourself. So the law does not allow us to do that. Beside the law, traditionally, according to our culture and tradition, we don't do abortion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we prevent people to do that. You know, when, when a, a young girl, she's pregnant, she comes to you, she wants to do abortion, refer the a, a person to the clinic. That's where she can do a proper abortion. And then if she's done that, she can come to you, you can clean there, you give her medication to clean the womb so that that's yeah. why a lot of young men are dying. Mm -hmm. Because those people, they do abortion without waiting for the proper period before they, they, they get into sexual intercourses and they, they end up doing that with their boyfriend, boyfriend they die. That's mm -hmm. why you see a lot of young men dying. And uh, those young men, some of them, they know that my wife, she or my girlfriend, she did abortion. They say, ah, I still live. It's not so calm. Satira, makuma, You must be careful. Mm -hmm. And earlier on, uh, Prof, you talked about decolonizing uh, our minds. And yeah. the EFF equally believes that uh, there wouldn't be or there wouldn't be heritage without, uh, you know, economic freedom, meaning that heritage without uh, the land, without the economy in the hands of uh, black, people black people is meaningless. Uh, do you strongly believe that we need the return of their stolen land in the hands of the black majority? Definitely we need that. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, it, it's, it's supposed to be a very proper or good strategy to, to get that thing done. Because mm -hmm. I know uh, people are fighting to get the land back. EFF is fighting to get the land back, to get jobs, to get mm -hmm. all these things. But there's opposition people. There are some people that they don't want that to happen because they, they know that that if that happened, it means they will lose power. Mm. They will lose money mm. because that's where the economy, economy is. So, but people must not give up. People must get, not get tired. This, this message of we, we want our land, we want our mineral resources, we want money to, in our hands, in our black people, in our African people, that message must persist every time when you open your mouth, you must tell people that we want this up until someone will listen to say, oh, okay. And it's, it, they will not just let it go easy. Mm -hmm. they, you know, there's uh, this legislature, this is parliament that it, they pass this law and that law and that law. Sometimes these laws, we will follow them. What can we do? We will follow the laws, but we must keep pushing to say maybe one day, one day we will change the law so that things become easier. Because a lot of people, are, I'm telling you, I was driving, I can't remember where I was driving. Mm -hmm. I've seen huge hectares. Of it's land. just got a fence. Mm -hmm. eh? Unused. Uh, unused. Is one person there with some buffaloes, etc. There, One person, eh, you, yeah, I was going to Woodsprate. I was going to Bushback Ridge. Mm -hmm. That area there, it's a lot of fences there. Who's, who's owned that place? It's one person. Maybe it's him and his wife. Or maybe him and his two children. And black people are, are living somewhere in the corner there. Mm. Yeah, that they, they are looking after the, the farm. That that's not that's not fair. This is very unfair, really. We need to get our land back. We need to get economy running. We need black people also to be empowered. We cannot live like this without without eco eco economy, without the land. Mm -hmm. it, it it will mean uh, the freedom. It's freedom yeah. that does not have a, a, a fruit that we want to mm -hmm. consume. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's where, the, uh, you know, in the land, that's where we build the likes of the Sadek University of that's African Medicine. Talk to us about uh, the university. Uh, I understand uh, last month you, uh, earlier this month, in fact, yes, you yes. launched the... you in the fact, fundraising you, you did the, Yeah, fundraising yeah. Galadina. Talk to us about that and uh, what were you aiming to achieve? My aim, you know, my aim to achieve is to show the world, to show people that uh, I'm here uh, alone, a traditional practitioner. I, had, I am having this vision of building University of African Medicine, which I managed to buy a land, which I managed to build. The building is complete. Now, but now I said, okay, um, you know, I'm 73 years old now. I don't have much power financially. I need assistance some way. That's why I say, let's have a gala dinner. Let me tell the people that if you want to lay hand, 
this is the opportunity. You can even even you talk, if you want land, you can build. We we what we need there now. Mm -hmm. We need a conference hall. Oh. We need a library there. We need um, a, a, a laboratory there where we got a, the traditional we do a research there. Now I was telling people, I'm telling people even now, whoever want to come in and help on the Southern University of African Medicine, if you donate or you sponsor or you build that conference hall, we will name that conference hall under your name. Mm -hmm. If you want to build a cafeteria there yeah. for our students, or you want to build, um, uh, maybe you want to build uh, a student accommodation, those are the th th things that are still outstanding. We would we need to buy a furniture. We need to buy computers. If you want to buy a, a, a furniture for reception, mm -hmm. we will name that reception on your name. If you want to buy furniture for a, the boardroom, we'll mm -hmm. name that boardroom on your name. And on 11 September 2025, that university will be officially opened. And uh, that will mean uh, everyone will come. Even now, before we open the university, we do have a student. We do have some graduate from Brazil. I was invited in Brazil um, in June, June, mm -hmm. June, yes, last year, mm -hmm. no, this year. Mm -hmm. I was invited in Brazil. I went to Brazil. I was invited by University of uh, Bahia, Federal of Bahia. Mm -hmm. When they saw what I'm doing, building a university alone, yeah. they wanted my experience to share with them why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this to preserve our culture and tradition. I'm doing this to preserve our plant. I'm doing this to make sure that we don't lose any of indigenous plant that we had. If you walk now at Ilpompo or Pumalanga, people are burning everywhere. Where will we get the herbs to heal people? Where will we get, if, even the, the, the scientists, when they want to do a research in a particular plant, where will they get it? So at the, in the University of African Medicine, we are fortunately, Kruger National Park donated about uh, 60, 80, 80 plant, indigenous plant. Mm -hmm. They are there. So we will protect them, we will grow them, Anyone who wants to come and learn, you can come and learn. Yeah. That's why we say um, anyone who wants to offer a hand on studying University of African Medicine, this is your opportunity. You are welcome to come in. Yeah. You can even visit the area so you okay. see what I'm talking about. Where is it based, by the way? It's in, in Lipompo province at the uh, Konis Chavan municipality, mm -hmm. at Ma Mavambe village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. No, it's a, it's a must visit uh, institution definitely, indeed. Definitely. And that those one. that want to. Uh, enroll. How do they get in, in, in contact? How do they apply? They they, they go to the, uh, our website. Mm -hmm. They register. It will will they will they will get a form there. They will get all the necessary uh, um, uh, information there. Yeah. So, so that's why we have a student from India. We have students from mm -hmm. Germany. They start online. You know. And some of. But let me tell you something. A lot of traditional healers, traditional practitioners, they did not go to school, but they have indigenous knowledge. Indigenous knowledge is what the ancestor guide you, which plant you must use to heal this person. That's why when we have our gobela, those traditional healers that they were been practicing for many years, mm -hmm. we give them honor a doctorate. That's why we give a honor doctorate even to some mus musician, like Dr. General Muska, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Elias Baloy, Dr. George Maluleke, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Santlen, Chavalala, because the music that they play is part of our culture, part of our tradition, Preserving and also culture, yeah. is part of educating and, and making sure that when you are married, you know how to live your life with your wife. Mm. Yeah. Talking about marriage, are you married? Yeah, I'm married. Uh -huh. <laughs> and how is being a, a family man? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. My wife, she's a very supportive woman. Um, she's, she's the one that she's managing the building. She's, she's a managing director. She's, she's controlling everything that is there. That's why the building is, is completed. You know, I'm not there all the time. I'm always on the road. You know, I have practiced all over, all over the provinces. So my wife, she's there. She's look after me. You can see I'm 73, but when I, tell, when I see someone who's 45, it looks very older than me. Mm -hmm. She look after me. Mm -hmm. She know what I want, and I know what she want. Mm -hmm. You know, and when we have some difficulties at home, we sit down, we talk. That's where we prevent this gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Because people, they don't talk in our <laughs> days. Don't you throw bones when you have problems at No, <laughs> no, no bones. <laughs> and use some mooty. No, 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 no. No bones, no mooty <laughs> in relationship. Sit okay. down, talk to your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't be shy. If, 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 if you made a mistake, say yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's, that, that's the best mooty. Mm -hmm. You know, 
But this thing of saying, no, no, I'm a man, I'll do whatever I want, it, it won't take you anyway. Mm -hmm. It will destroy your marriage, it will destroy your relationship as well. Mm -hmm. And you'll make children grow in a, in a, in a, in a, in a terrible environment. Mm -hmm. I don't want my children to do that. So yeah. I've got children that are at university, are doing doctorate, doctors, some of them are chefs or restaurant chefs, etc. That's what I want everybody to, to do. And, and when you... You walk into um, a traditional uh, practitioner's house. You must see the beauty of the house. Mm -hmm. You must feel healed once you walk in there. Mm -hmm. Don't walk in there. If you come with a child that is sick, a seven years or eight year child that is sick, you take that particular child to a, a traditional practitioner. When you walk in there, the child cry because she see or he sees a lot of things in, in, in the Indumba mm -hmm. that is scare the child. Mm -hmm. We don't need to do that. So we need to make our children to grow in a proper good environment. Let our children believe on what they want to believe. Let our children go to school, attend the school properly. Let my, let your wives do what is good for the family. Mm -hmm. And I just want to tap into this now, your roots. Where were you born, um, uh, Prof? And how did you discover yourself in this journey of uh, African medicine? We should have started there. <laughs> <We're ending> there. <laughs> I, I was born in Mozambique. Yeah. I was born in Mozambique, uh, Shibutu district, in a very small remote area, very poor area, Maiveni. So um, uh, my late father, my late mother, when mm -hmm. I grew up, my grandma, she was a, a traditional practitioner, a very popular, a very strong one, but she was blind. You know why she became blind? Because her father, I was told, did not want her to go for training. She, mm. Her father did not believe it, did not want her to go to become a traditional healer. Yeah. So the ancestors punished her, she became blind. So she went to, for, for, for training when she's blind. She graduated when she's blind. She was working wonderful. Then at some stage, she was sick. And then she they sent somebody, she was staying alone. Um, to say, my sister must go in and stay with her. My sister, she refused. She said, ah, she will travel with me. She will send me there and there every day. Mm -hmm. So I said, I will go and stay with my grandma. So I went there, stayed with my grandma, helping her to dig root, showing me, she was showing me everything, how to do this. She was a, she was a specialist on infertility. She was a specialist on a, a child when the, the child is crossed. You know, by then, there were no hospitals there. Yeah, when the child is crossed, there was no operation, no no hospital. But she, she, birth. Yeah, she knew what she was doing to so that the child can turn and uh, a woman get uh, uh, easy, easy yeah. a bed. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. then before she passed on, she said, I must remain and look after her helps. But before that, my name I'm by and by. Ne? I was given this name by and by. A big gun, a cannon. Oh. By and by is a big bazooka. gun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I asked my father, why many you give it to by and by? Mm -hmm. My father said, no, your grandfather is the one who gave you this name. Because when he was born, it was those time of war. He was German and he, was there, he went there to fight and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I said, it means I'll become popular. My father laughed. He said, I don't know. popular, Or maybe your name will be big. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I can see the meaning of my name. Yeah, by now, and by. Yes. Now, before she, she passed on, she passed on, she left uh, those uh, with me. She said, I must look after this. Mm -hmm. But because I was very young, after a burial, my father came to South Africa in 1972. I came with my father here. Mm -hmm. Then we stayed in Velkom. I became a musician. I was playing music with the William and the Young Five. Okay. We played music with, with the William and the Young Five. We made a festival with, that was Steve Kekar with Juluk and all this. Mm -hmm. I forgot about... What my, my grandma uh, left yeah. me. And then I became very sick. Become very sick. Nobody can 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 to show that me. it's a calling. Yes, show that it's a calling. I went everywhere. They took me ever no, they could not. Until we went to one a, 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 a young girl, she was just graduated. When we walk in there, the spirit of that young 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 Sangoma came out. They say, Hey, when you are a very big traditional healer, when go back. That's nothing, no one will, will heal you. You must go back to Mozambique. They, they, your grandma, she's upset because those things are getting rotten. Go back. Then I took a decision to go back. Then I went training, I took everything, and then 1982, I graduated as a traditional healer. And then 2012, 20, that's when I started to do a research, to say, no, 
I know my grandma, she used to live in a small shack, I mean, small rendezvous. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot just let her down. Let me investigate. Mm -hmm. That's when, when I said I wanted to find, I wanted to go to Germany to do a research. People, they were laughing. Media, the newspaper people, they say, hey, traditional healer, going to do a research, how you will go in, in the plane? Because the, we know that the traditional healer, they don't mm -hmm. even wear shoes. Yeah. They walk barefoot. <laughs> I say, no, no. My ancestors, I'll tell them. I want to take their job further. So I went there. To the world. Yeah, I went there, did a research. I went to, to, somebody sponsored me the trip. I went to University of uh, Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. I, I went to France. I went to a lot of countries. After that, I went to Malawi. I went to all these African co co countries, did a research, wanting to understand if someone suffers from diarrhea in Malawi, what do you, what do you use? Mm -hmm. And in Zambia, in Nigeria, where, where I came back with all that knowledge. Then I put all those herbs together, go to the laboratory. This is the product. Let's investigate. Yeah. That's where I started. Mm -hmm. Then I said, no, no then I, I don't want to work on the small rendezvous. Let me have my practice. I have my first, I'm the only traditional practitioner to have a, a first clinic in Malamulele. It was official opened by Joe Masangani when he was MSC of Sport and Culture, mm -hmm. I think 1996 or so. Mm -hmm. So from there, because people were coming from far seeking for my help. You know, when I did this uh, uh, thing of uh, a lady, she was turned into a zombie at Malamulela. I think you have read that story. It was on television. Mm -hmm. uh, it was on Bona magazine. Uh, I'm the one who, who did that. I brought her back. She was alive. She was fine. And then everybody would say, what? Because I followed what my grandma told me. Mm -hmm. And then that's why I became popular. That's why I started to have practice now in Johannesburg, Rustenburg, all over the places to mm -hmm. say, let me take my knowledge there so yeah. that I can heal people. Yeah. yeah. And you know, sometimes in the most unfortunate um, events of life, doctors would say, we have tried the best we could, but unfortunately we couldn't save this person's life. Is there a point where, as a traditional healer, you realize that you have helped this person, you have done everything humanly possible to save their life, and now you have to tell them that, or tell the family that, you know what, we've tried all we could, but now we can't help you any further. Yes, Can of you course. get to that point? Yes, I do that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's why people recommend a lot of people, because some of them, I don't, I don't even start healing the person. When a person comes to my practice, walk into the consulting room, you know what I do? I check on the palm of the left-hand side. I can see, I can cure these people, I can help these people, but when the stage is not okay, I'll tell the, 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 the client, the sick person, to go out. They'll take the person to the car or so, and then they come back. I say, no, no, no. Um, according to what I see, to mm -hmm. give this person herbs, medication, it's too late now. Uh, it's too late now. We, we, cannot do any, we cannot do anything more. So, mm -hmm. yes, I do that. Even yeah. if it's my client, a person who come to me, consult to me, I do whatever I know. I do everything. Yeah. Until I say, no, okay, this is the end now. I cannot mm. do anything. Uh, I have done what I could do up until here. Yeah. Or I can refer the client to, to the next traditional practitioner, mm. or I refer the client to the hospital. Uh, I, I do work with a lot of hospital and a lot of general practitioners. Mm -hmm. But sometimes life is life. We can cure sicknesses, but not life. When the dead end came, it's no way. It's nothing we can do. So we must accept that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what what are some of the challenges that you may have come across, or perhaps before we talk about the challenges, what is your biggest success story you can talk about? Uh, be it from curing a, a client, or breaking into the industry, or being one of the um, formidable uh, traditional healers. What are some of your success stories? My success story, you know, is the one that I just mentioned mm -hmm. to, to bring back Sylvia Matevula. She was turned into a zombie. You know, that is, that is my success story. That's where the breakthrough came. That's where mm -hmm. I said um, I, I must respect the ancestors. I must respect what they tell me to do. So, so the other successes is, 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 um, is what I have achieved of bringing a lot of traditional practitioners in one house, in one room, mm -hmm. so that we can show them this is the best way to practice. 
And uh, when I've done that, the world or the province or South Africa recognize that this man is doing something that is, is very important. That's why I was given an honorary doctorate mm -hmm. to become a professor in 2020 mm -hmm. of, of my good work. Um, I have done a lot of things. I have uh, adopted children, disabled children from different schools. Uh, I, 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 I built a lot of uh, churches. I built a lot of schools. So that's where you, you know that I know God. Yeah. When, when they have uh, um, this uh, terrible wind, yeah, <laughs> they come and look for, for assistance, I, I help them to put a roof up, mm -hmm. to buy a keyboard for them to, to go and sing. You know? So a lot, lot of things that I've done. But they, the main thing that I said, this is what is in my dream, that I, I, I was so happy to see it happen, is the fundraising of a gala dean of University mm -hmm. of African Medicine. Because that one, I have been thinking alone, telling my wife. My wife, she said, but how are we going to build the university? I say, let's build. We started. It's up there. So it's only what is left is the official opening of the university. So those are the success story of my life. Yeah. Mm. And uh, the challenges, looking at the challenges, uh, I understand uh, life generally. Yes. Uh, is these ups and downs, these yes, highs yes. and lows. Challenges you know. from my first marriage, yes, okay, that is gone, it's fine. Uh, the challenges that I, um, um, I, I normally used to face is to find herbs. In our, in our country now or in our continent now, the serious challenge that we have as traditional practitioners is where to get the proper herbs. Mm -hmm. That's why people now, they just dig anything because they cannot find what they're looking for. For example, they will just dig anything and then give people. So that is a serious challenge that... Uh, um, uh, I'm facing. But uh, fortunately, because at the university now we go to the nursery, we're going to plant it. So I think that challenge will go away. Because I worry every day that when it will rain. And when it rains, people go and chop everything. They don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a muti or plant that we call it Mbolovisani in its tonga. Yeah. This Mbolovisani, um, people who happen to go and, 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 and chop it for firewood. And when you chop that Mbolovisani for firewood, you know what will happen? Because you're going to go come and cook food for yourself, for your family. You'll yeah. fight you alone and you'll think that there's a witchcraft. There's no mm -hmm. such thing. It's because you took the wrong plant that you cannot use to make firewood. Bolivisan is not a plant that you must use to firewood. Once okay. you do that, you'll fight. You'll fight or say, you, you, you can find your wife, pick the clothes and she leave you. She does not know why. And even you, you don't know why. But when you investigate, you go to traditional healers, those they throw bones, they'll see that you use the Mbolovisan. So that demonstrates the power of African medicine. Yes, yes, yes. Whether good or bad, yeah. Yes, it's so. And and what did our grand grandparents said we must not use, we must not use for, for, for healing. If they say this one you must not eat, you must not eat. Mm -hmm. It will never change. It's not a case of saying, no, it's so sovereign wakale, this is all the story. There is no such thing. Mm -hmm. Like Makuma. If there's a dead in your family, you need to respect that period. You must wait for that period until everything is cleared, until everything is done. So young people say, nah, my father died. He's, he's still in the motion of my mother. They don't care. They care on. It's a life as usual. It can't be like that. What must they do? They must, they must preserve. They must wait for that period. They must not go for, for sexual intercourse for the period until they are guided by the, the elders that, okay, that, that period has passed, then it's fine. You, 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 you can carry on with your life. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't do that, you don't respect the dead person. You don't respect that period. You must respect that period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want us to stretch this a little bit. When we talk about heritage here in, in, in South Africa, we are mostly an undivided mm. um, unequal uh, society and we find ourselves in a situation where uh, the economy of South Africa is white dominated and in the main the issue of inequality be between women and men. Mm -hmm. When you establish the SADC uh, University of African Medicine, when we look at the staff comp uh, component are you therefore looking at this historical background and try to 
you know, address some of the injustices of the past. Yes, of course. That's why I'm saying my wife, she's, she's, a, she's, she's the one managing yeah. the, the construction there. Mm -hmm. uh, I have women there in the construction. Uh, you know, in my practice, in yeah. my, all, all my practice, I have about 172 uh, people working for my practice. And in, on that one, 75% are women. So I'm trying to, to, to show the world or to show people that this is the only way that we must empower our women. We were oppressed, all of us. But men used to be uh, oppressing their, their, their wives or their girlfriend or women. That's why now we need to change. We need to try to accommodate uh, women as well. Mm -hmm. That will make sure that they also understand that they are human beings. Uh -huh. Of course, we are all human beings, but we are not at the same level. Uh, uh, although even now in the construction, uh, we, I have women working there. Some of them go upstairs on the steps, on a scaffold, etc., etc. Some of them, they say, ah, I cannot go on the scaffold. It's fine. Do other work. So that's what we must do. In our, in our um, uh, heritage, in our culture, in this environment that we are in now, mm -hmm. where, where the economy is so, so stressed, a uh, lot of people, they don't have money. Uh, that's why you, you see, um, it's not like before, when, when men used to marry four or five wives living in one homestead. But you cannot do it now because, you know, the people are looking at, a, at a, when my husband dies, what I, what I will remain with. So if, if it happened that we have two, three, four wives, it means each one must have her own home so that she can control her home. She can control the children. She can control her finances, etc. Do you it's, believe in polygamy? Polygamy is there. It will not change, although I'm, I'm married with one wife. Mm -hmm. But polygamy is there. And polygamy, is, if, if, if it's done in, in, a, in a proper way, it's a very good thing. It will reduce divorces. It will re you know, when you're married with four or five wives, it's not one wife or second or third wife. She will say, I want to divorce because I want to go uh, home, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. She knows that she's got a lot of things here. She did a lot of things in this, this home state. She wants to remain here. She wants to look after you. She wants to look after the children. And what, you, what people must learn and understand, when you have two or three, four wives, etc., you are the one who can make them to love one another. But, and you are the one who can make a mess because you love one because she's this like this, she's like that one. You must <laughs> compare them, all of them, they're the same. <laughs> they're all the same. They like the shapes, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And the looks. <laughs> and the looks also. But, but you did look to this one and that one when they were there. Yeah. So when you, when you bring them closer to you, you live with them, you must take care of all of them. If you buy this beautiful dress to this one, buy it to that, to that one. Mm. King buy Muna, them weave. King Munadashi is doing that. <laughs> yeah. And he's doing well. You know? yeah. So you cannot uh, 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 say this is the first one, she's a little bit better, the second one much better, the third one because she's more younger, she's the nice one and whatever. No. <laughs> <laughs> she is much younger, but you look after them equally. Yeah, true, yeah. true. Yeah. And there's this issue of um, um, One Africa, Prof. The EFF has always advocated for One Africa, One mm. Currency. And I understand you were born and bred in Mozambique, but today you are here in South Africa, which is something that the, the EFF embraces, that we are one. Mm. And there are those that are opposed to Africa being one, saying if you... Your, your Mozambican must stay there because if you come to South Africa, you're going to exhaust the jobs in jobs, South Africa, uh, the yeah. resources and all of that. What is your standpoint on the issue of immigration? Oh, um, you know, uh, people need to learn. People need to understand that we're all African. Mm -hmm. There were no borders here before the colonial. The colonial, when they came here, they divided us so that we cannot have... A, 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 a enough power. Mm -hmm. So we must um, say, ah, Mozambique and Lesotho and Zimbabwe, etc. Uh, it was no borders yet. Yeah? Um, you know, I just don't know. It's just that it, well, life is life. You know, we have leaders that they died and they wanted Africa to be one. Yeah, um, um, yeah. Kwame Krumah. Kwame Krumah. Mm -hmm. you, you see, Kuma Sankara. You see, I can say mm -hmm. even Mugabe here. Mm -hmm. He Kuma was Mugabe, vocal yes. on Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, like Samora Machel, he was vocal in Africa. Fidel mm -hmm. Castro. Mm -hmm. Other countries that I can mention, they were vocal in one country. But the problem is, our, our leaders, they're scared. I don't know why they're scared to have one president 
in 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 the whole Africa. You mean the GNU president? Yeah, GNU, <laughs> uh, we, if you, if you can if you can manage to do that, I'm mm. telling you, Africa will prosper because we will yeah. have uh, no passport. If we say okay, we want to have passport, then we will have one passport mm -hmm. and we will have one currency. This thing of when you go to Malawi, the, the, the rent is up, the Malawian kwacha is down. When you go to Zimbabwe, it's like this. When you go to Mozambique, the medical is like this. You know, it's, 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 it's the way that the, those people, the economic people, white people, the who, oppressors, oppressors yeah. the they want us to live like that. They want mm -hmm. us to live like that. But imagine when you go to Europe. I went to Brazil. When I was in Brazil, the, the, the money of Brazil, comparing to the rent here, the rent is nothing mm -hmm. because it comes from Africa. But we are rich. Yeah, and we are rich. We have everything here. Mm -hmm. We have everything here. So I don't know if if the leaders of the EFF, together with other leaders of other countries, because it, it, this is a thing that must be done by a, a combination of a good head, people who will think carefully, yeah. let's let's take out the border of Mozambique. Let's remove the border of, of Zimbabwe, Malawi, Zambia. Let's become one. Okay, if, if they say, okay, I want to remain as president of Malawi, it's fine, remain there, but let's remove the border. Yeah. And let's the borders sit, must fall. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's come down and agree on a currency. Yeah. yeah, let's have one currency. So if you if I have 10 rand here, it means my 10 rand, the value of 10 rand here is the same value when I go to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. It's not like when you go to Zimbabwe, you have 10 rand and then you have 20 million dollars uh, uh, in Zimbabwe. You see, it does not make sense. Mm -hmm. It makes other country. Poor and poor and poor and poor. But if we have one country, one currency, that will assist us. Thank yeah. you very much. And uh, as a parting shot, uh, uh, Prof, what can we expect? What can we look forward uh, from you and uh, the, the impact that you, you'll make through the SADC University of African uh, Medicine and also as a traditional healer? Um, really, I would like to first appreciate this uh, this opportunity to come here, mm -hmm. uh, talk to you, present my case mm -hmm. to the to everyone who's going to, to the watch world. Here, yeah. to the world. Yeah. But uh, uh, really, really, um, I will humble ask whoever want to be part of Sadiq University of African Medicine. When we say African medicine, it means the whole Africa. When I was in Brazil, they say. Why you say African medicine? I say it's African medicine because I'm in Africa. But it, but it, when you come there, we will not say, no, 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 you can't get herbs here. You must mm -hmm. get herbs here mm -hmm. because Brazil, they got a massive forest day of herbs. So really, I, I really appreciate uh, my coming. And I really wish to ask mm -hmm. everybody, when we come to, to economic freedom, uh, when we come to the land, when we come to mining, when we come to everything, Let's come together. I know politics is politics, but I know people will oppose this, but when they are sitting in their house, they know that they're mm -hmm. opposing something that is go very good. Mm -hmm. So let's all put our hands together mm -hmm. and work for a success of this continent and uh, South Africa in particular. And also, um, uh, in my lifetime, I would like to see um, the official opening of that Sadiq University of African Medicine, and I will invite you, I will invite the leaders as mm -hmm. well, uh, this opportunity to invite the leaders yeah, to the come. Commander in chief. Yeah, yeah. yeah Commander in chief. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I think Commander in chief, when you watch this, yeah. they will say, ah, no, 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 I want to build a, a, a community. Uh, um, that conference all day. Yes. It's yes. Watch the, yeah. <laughs> so he will be most welcome, yeah. uh, Commander in Chief, to yeah. come there. You can even pass there one day. Mm -hmm. See, what I'm saying is reality. Yeah. I'm not saying something that's not there. It's the reality. I'm doing it alone without any help. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing it from my heart. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. It can take too long, like it took long, but it's fine. It's getting there. Yeah. So I really appreciate this opportunity and uh, I wish to visit you next time. But uh, I'm inviting you to come there. Even if right. not is official, just yeah. come and witness and see. So when you see it, you'll say, yes, this yeah. man has done wonder to African medicine. Well, not definitely. Yeah. So currently, do you have a, a laboratory that you are uh, you know, processing your medicine through? We need, we, yes, yes, but yeah. that is outside laboratory. Okay. But that's cool. why I want to build one day by the university. university so yeah. it's not only me, all the traditional practitioners, when they bring the herbs there, and the other thing, I need to encourage traditional practitioners, traditional healers, mm -hmm. please don't be scared to take your herbs to the laboratory. That will assist you. Mm -hmm. you when you go to the chemist or everywhere to the pharmacist, we see traditional medicine there, labeled it mm -hmm. in a different name. Yeah, But those herbs are your herbs, are our herbs. 
But if somebody there who is clever, he took those herbs, he prepared them, so take your herbs to the laboratory. Mm -hmm. I'm here to assist you. They, no one will steal your knowledge. Your indigenous knowledge is yours. Mm -hmm. But it, it, what, will, what, will, what will happen if you die with that knowledge? Mm -hmm. You die with that knowledge, is gone. We need to, to write books. I have my own books yeah. now, The Great Inyanga. Oh, so that, okay. that I want to people to read about me, to know about me, to understand mm -hmm. about me, and also to assist them how to develop their herbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those that would like to get in contact with you or visit you uh, for consultation, of course, uh, a Prof, yeah. uh, how do they do that? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a traditional practitioner. We have a toll-free number. Oh, People okay. will be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> sure. The only one. The, yeah. traditional practice, the most have, accessible. Yes. Yeah. I have this number. Uh -huh. It's a toll-free number. It's 24 mm -hmm. hours. It's 0800 mm -hmm. 014 531 mm -hmm. 0800 mm -hmm. 0415 The WhatsApp number is 082 mm -hmm. 765 mm -hmm. Or you can go to mm -hmm. You'll get a lot of information there. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, thank you very much. And we appreciate this opportunity as well to I real, I real uh, do. drink from a well of your wisdom, <laughs> uh, Professor. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much equally to the people of South Africa, Africa and the diaspora for tuning in. This is the EFF podcast. So we were joined by uh, Professor by and by the great Inyang. So the details are on the screen. If should you want to be in contact with him, then there you go. Please remember to subscribe to the EFF YouTube channel for more on the EFF uh, podcast. My name is Titus Tungur. So we have come to the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Until we meet again, good day. Go and get. How can I lend Lucy Lam? How can How can I lend Lucy Lam? Oh, Lucy Lam, how can I lend Lucy Lam? How can I lend Lucy Lam? How can I lend Lucy Oh, Lucy Lam, how can I lend Lucy Lam?